tight. I'm going to take a look at one that is a collaboration between Untitled Art as well as uh, Listerman Bruin. It is the Wisconsin Stout that you see right here. Let's switch it back so you can get a better look at it. And this one comes in at 10% ABV. The label's still getting a little flushed out by the uh, lights in the background, so let's just switch it over here. Then that way you can see the label itself. Uh, this one is an Imperial Stout at the 10% ABV level and is actually highlighted by the use of lactose and maple. Not too much is really said about the beer outside of that. Do you have a date on the can? I've had this one in the cellar for a bit of time. Just haven't got a chance to uh, get into it with all the beers I had. So finally getting a chance to break this one out. Untitled Art is actually out of Wisconsin. And then uh, Listerman is actually local to me here in Cincinnati. So a nice little collab and nice little local feel to it as well. Um, on the can, it makes mention that the artist is Stephanie Heyman. So nice that they give the artist props, but a little bit of artwork there on the can itself, as you can see. So let's go ahead and take a look at getting into this one here as I bring it back to the other camera. And big shout out. I don't know what Dolly's actually doing, but I tried to add some other stuff on here. Dolly and Beanie, the latest subscriber, as you can see kind of there. But I think Dolly was doing some different things with her channel and she just got reconnected again. Anyway, I can already pick up some nice aroma coming out of this. I can pick up some of the lactose aroma. I can also pick up some of that maple sweetness. Nice pint-sized can for this one. You take a look at the beer, nice dark beer color, being a stout, light behind it. It's a uh, very deep dark brown, pretty much, you can call that a jet black. I'm not getting much tint through the bottom. The head itself, got a nice two finger head. Always like to get a head on a beer when you can, because that'll open up the aromas with it as well, as you see. And the bubble size is arranging as it starts to break down a little bit. So it'll probably lace the glass nicely going down, I would think. Oh my goodness. Right now, the maple is just popping right out of this beer. My, it's like, where's the pancakes? Where's the pancakes right now? I'm getting the maple, and it feels like I should have pancakes with this. Hey, what's happening, Paul? Cheers, my friend. Definitely a brewery I love to try uh, stuff from. Cheers. Yeah, so from which one? Because there's a collab, Untitled Art or Listerman or both because uh, <laughs> both do good beers and this one is uh damn fine smelling oh my goodness if any of the canadian guys have had this one you know their love for maple they would definitely be all over this i believe <sighs> also brings to my image of that maple pancakes and then also having some bacon with it too this would be a nice this is going to be a nice one. Oh, that sweetness is just coming out now this one has a date on it from 3-13-19. As I mentioned, I had it in the cellar. We're 10 months out, and it's still holding a nice aroma feel. So you get the taste, and uh, Paul says, looks sexy, just like you. Cheers, brother. Well, thanks, brother. <laughs> oh, that baby is smooth. Has a nice feel with the lactose. Gives that a nice creamy base to it where it just lays on the tongue. That maple is now coming into full view again in the taste factor. Getting a nice sweetness. You know, in Super Troopers, they were chugging maple syrup. If it tasted like this, I would probably chug maple syrup as well. Um, got a nice little thickness to it. Not too thin. I know you like that, Paul. The thickness is there. Has a nice little body weight to it. Just lays on the tongue ever so nicely. What is going on, Todd? What's going on? Gilbert, cheers to you both as well. Uh, Listerman, I've had an untitled arts brew once. Yeah, yeah, Listerman, um, they're local here. And um, I probably need to get you some of their beers, Paul, at some point. I haven't sent out a, bill, a beer mail in a while, but you would definitely dig some of the Listerman. Joe had a chance. I think Joe tried some from when he was here with Todd um, when he came down. Um, they didn't make it over to that brewery, but they um, do some fantastic beers. Uh, Gilbert said, I love maple. What a stereotype. <laughs> I know you love maple too, Gilbert. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that is nice. And you also get that feel of the nice chocolate in there, too. On the back end, a little bit more of a, I almost feel like more of, like a, more of a toastiness and a roastiness, but you do get a little bit of that there from the malt. But it's really after all that nice maple and lactose that takes place. Two good breweries making another good beer. As I mentioned, 10% ABV. Now, this one, I think I pulled it out of the fridge and it was at 44 then. I did just actually sit out for about half an hour because I was doing some other stuff here. And so it's actually warmed up nicely. And with a stout like this, you want to let it warm up. And Paul would attest to this, of course. Uh, it opens up more of the flavors and stuff and more of the aromas. And so if you look at a temperature chart for different beer styles, stouts are up there as one of the ones you want to have, you know, pretty much more closer to maybe basement temperature or right below that or depending. If you like Paul, you might want to boil it. So, you know, but you definitely don't want to really enjoy these as much as ice cold. I think some people really miss out on the benefit when they do that because when they come out of taps at bars or even some of the local brew houses, they might be a little more colder than they need to be. So... Just something to keep in mind. And now I'm getting a little bit of a coffee feel delayed on it later on. So that's kicking in as a nice aftertaste feeling. Oh, Todd said they did go to Listerm. And I thought, um, I thought you guys didn't make it to Listerm. I thought you went to, uh, that's right, you went to Listerman and you went to Mad Tree, I believe, after I left you guys. Okay. Yeah, so Listerman, a blast. They have the Lucky Charms beer as well and some other stuff that Listerman does. So you can't go wrong with them, really. Get a nice feel now, settling in on the lips. Right there as I move the tongue, get that nice taste factor. Nice feel on the initial, nice feel on the finish can really just sit back and enjoy this one. It's not one you really want to race through if you're in it for the flavor. If you did want to chug it, this is one that you could probably chug rather easily as well because it has that nice smooth quality to it. Oh, that's good. Got a little bit of a, a chewiness factor there at the end as well. But I'll pull this up here again so you guys can see the actual can. And this should zoom in on this camera here. If not, I'll turn the lights off on the background. But here's some of the artwork. And then here to the front is the can. I'll hit the lights there. And now you can see that better with the untitled art. And Listerman logos. And this again is the... Wisconsin Stout, home of the Wisconsin Badgers, the Badgers, and uh, definitely one I would recommend picking up. So, not sure how many of you've had some of the beers from Untitled Art. Obviously, from Listerman, I know a couple of you had uh, one from Paul on Untitled Art, but two breweries, I would say grab some stuff if you can. Uh, Gilbert said, "Load up on maple syrup when it's on sale." <laughs> Why not picture you having a Cellar full of maple syrup and whiskey, Gilbert. <laughs> and depending on the time, you can drink either of them straight from the bottle. That nice velvety feel to the beer, too, from the lactose. Now I can feel it in the uh, upper part, like of the mouth, the roof of the mouth. A little bit in the cheek area. Not getting too much of a warming sensation. So the uh, the 10% of the alcohol is hidden nicely in this one. Not too overly boozy or anything along those lines. And it just has a nice presence all about it. Definitely would give this one a good rating, which I'll do on my untap there. Um, untap, the average rating on this from my friends that have had it has been 4.14. Overall, 4.1. Uh, definitely one. That I would drink a few of these for sure. And one that said I may have to. Uh, you know I don't really go back and repeat that many beers as you know. But one that I would definitely pick up again. Um, if it came out again at some point here. Maple syrup farmers in my family going back. I'm a living stereotype. <laughs> I didn't mean a stereotype. You get, I thought all the guys in Canada. I thought it was like part of being Canadian. Is you have to love maple syrup. I just thought it was like in your blood type system as well. I mean. 
As much as America loves diabetes, you guys love maple syrup. <laughs> hey, what's going on, John? Cheers, my friend. How are you doing this evening? Um, just uh, enjoying a nice double Imperial Stout right now from two of our breweries and uh, great collaboration. But yeah, pick it up if you happen to see it or anything from these two breweries. And then I get like, it's really that maple... I was going to say, I get a little bit of a feel, kind of like a vanilla in there as well, but yeah, I mean, can you just pour this on your pancakes or your French toast or your waffles? Is that okay? Can you just pour beer on top of them and eat it that way? Who needs the actual maple syrup if you got this? Oh, pretty delicious. Anybody else drinking anything tonight out there as well? Are you guys enjoying anything before... Uh, I should go ahead and uh, close down in a little bit. If anybody's sharing any beer they want to let me know about or share, definitely always ears and looking for new beers that might be something to actually pick up or give a try. Today was definitely a long day and I wasn't going to drink one, but later on I was like, you know what, I'm going to have just one to take the edge off and relax a little bit. So this will be a good one for a cigar as well. Um, another one that matches up nicely. Which, in the winter time, I don't really smoke the cigars because, like I told us, I said before, I smoke outside. But uh, actually, we've been getting such breaks in the weather, I could actually break open a cigar on one of these days and be outside and be just fine. Elbow in the house. Cheers, my friend. Thinking those imperial stouts. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate. I, I'm a guy that can drink a stout all year long. It just doesn't bother me to sit back and enjoy a nice stout. And this is a. Uh, you know, one of the things, like I said, this came out actually last March and um, still holding up well. Uh, we're in the process where next month, really next week maybe, that uh, one of my favorite Lagunitas beers will be back out and that'll be the Undercover. That's one I, I probably will pick up again just because I enjoy drinking that one. Don't know when I'll have time to drink it with all the other beers I have, but usually it ends up in my cart some way, somehow. Uh, Cameron's Cream Ale. Nice. I still, now Cameron's, I actually did Cameron's Barley Wine. I believe it was Cameron's Barley Wine I did before that was actually decent. Let me take a look here. The name sounds really familiar. It was a Canadian Barley Wine. <laughs> but maybe it was, or maybe I still have it there. If they have one, yeah, they have the early bird one. I thought I had another one from them. Now maybe I'm, maybe it wasn't a bar one. Maybe it was something different. Okay. Remembering all these different type of beers is not always the easiest thing for sure. I swear I had a Cameron's beer though. Let me take a look here. Checking my untapped to see. I did. So, Cameron's, I had the Where the Buffalo Roam a while back. And that was their 13% ABV barley wine. That was a decent one. I don't know if you've had that one or not before, Gilbert. But uh, I did enjoy Where the Buffalo Roam. And I uh, thought it was done pretty well. A little bit different because it was a lighter color than I expected for the barley wine. But very nice overall. Uh, let me see here. Uh, John said nothing new tonight. Uh, yeah, we're the Buffalo Room. So you had named it there. Yeah, so yeah, that's the one I actually enjoyed. Cheers, Michelle. Sparkle Supreme Queen in the house. Hopefully you're having a great Monday night too. As uh, the work week has started back, so to speak. But this one definitely uh, hits the spot. Ended up going to the office today, and obviously when it's, we started, everybody was talking Kobe Bryant there too, so people are still getting over that. It's going to be interesting tomorrow night, because as the Lakers' first home game, um, since this all happened, and I can only imagine the tribute they're going to do there. They already came out and said they're going to put Kobe into the Hall of Fame earlier than usual. I think he had. I think he's supposed to be out in the NBA five years, so he hasn't been out full five, but he's going in for the 2020 class. Um, 
it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be a lot of sad eyes tomorrow. So if you watch the Lakers game and you're a Kobe fan, I guess you better just have some tissues there as well. Um, so I think tonight they were showing his uh, last game when he went off for 60 um, as a tribute. So you know, sad thing. Like I said yesterday, enjoy every day as if it could be your last. I guess because you just never know when it's gonna happen. Uh, let me see, I was trying to mess up my thing here because I was flipping back to the basketball game and right now Spectrum TV is sucking once again. Ever since they were taken over by like, um, uh, time, they took over Time Warner, who's crap. Yeah, I just flipped over to ESPN and they already took out a Kobe Bryant thing on there as well, so. Um, uh, let me see here, like your gaming channel. Well, thanks, Michelle, I appreciate that. I'm going to be doing more stuff on the gaming channel, um, I'm just going to kind of get back into it. I'm trying to add some stuff there during the course of time, playing the various games. Um, usually Todd, who's in here, gets on there with me and Eric, and we've been playing Modern Warfare. Todd and I usually play some baseball on there, MLB. Um, and then I'll do other stuff. I was playing Diablo the other night. So I got a bunch of games, and I want to get that going a little bit more. YouTube hasn't made it easy with starting another channel with the way they keep changing stuff. But at the same point, I just do it for fun anyway. And uh, yeah, R.I.P. to the late great Kobe, John said, and R.I.P. to the GOAT, Michelle said as well. Yeah, so he actually, uh, he grew up in Philly before he went over to Italy to play some ball and stuff. But, um, you know, he went to Lower Marion, which I grew up about 20, 25 minutes outside Philly. So a lot of people back home were also affected that kind of knew him from back then at that time as well. And he was doing a lot of different things in his foundation and stuff like that. So, yeah, on ESPN right now, they're actually doing a Kobe's farewell with his last game when he, like, went off for 60, which is crazy because how many people in their last game actually go off for a bunch of points? Usually it's kind of like, you know, you do a farewell-type bow or something like that, but he crushed it, so. But that being that, this beer is really feeling good right now. I would like to see them actually do like a smoked version of this, but I think a smoked maple lactose stout would actually be a pretty decent thing they could probably pull off. That would be nice. Uh, John says, love Kobe. Yeah. Kobe was, I was always, you know, I grew up younger age as a Lakers fan, and I was always a Lakers fan up to the, when it was a Kobe Shaq type thing. And I actually, when that happened, I became not as much a fan of Kobe from the stuff that happened and then him trying to put it like on Shaq or something like that and everything. And I became more of a Heat fan at that point. But overall, you still had to respect the game that Kobe had there and everything like that and what he brought to it. And then now off the, off the court, the stuff he's done, the things that you've seen him doing with the different foundations. He had different things where he built different, um, uh, education type platforms for schools and kids. There was like a thing from the uh, one of the Dubai princes, I guess, I believe it was today, that put a farewell thing out there because he had like donated whatever to like Dubai type children and stuff. And of course, around America, he did a bunch of different things. He was involved in around the LA community and stuff like that. I mean, it's just a sad story, way too young. Yeah, Todd, truly a sad situation, especially with three young kids on there yeah yeah so i mean his daughter the two players she had um then you had the uh, two parents and the uh, mother of one of the kids and then the pilot and all the stuff's coming out now where they were actually giving clearance to the guy that'd be able to fly in that based on his expertise he was getting special clearance and just a bad thing you you can't anytime mother nature is involved we don't have much control as much as we think we may have so they should have they, it's hindsight 2020 they should have brought him back but you know they let him go on what he they thought he knew so uh his offensive package was ridiculous his offense i was sorry wait, his offense package was ridiculous yeah uh Kyrie Irving is the closest current player to Kobe I'm heading to bed right now, and I'll chat with you another day. All right, thanks, Sparkles. Thanks for swinging by. Um, Irvin, uh, I was, I'm not really, I, I'm not really a huge Kyrie fan. I think Kyrie does a good job. Um, he's a great player, but I don't know if he's on Kobe's level or to that next type thing. I mean, 
Are other players that are kind of up there with where the, how Kobe had his game? It's kind of like Kyrie doesn't have some of the skill set that Kobe actually has, you know, with the driving and stuff like that. And I'm not talking about driving to the hole because Kyrie can definitely do that. But driving against some of the big men in the league, dunking on the big men in the league, you know. Um, but Kyrie, Kyrie's solid in his own way, in his own game. You know, Kobe's just Kobe. I mean... Now they're trying to do a push for Kobe to be the NBA logo as well. I don't know if I'm, if I'll put him as the NBA logo as of yet. I mean, I don't know. People have to, I guess, make that decision at run the NBA. But I could be partial because Jerry West is a Mountaineer. He did go to school at WVU. So I do like Jerry West being the logo of the NBA. But, you know, at one point they're talking about LeBron being a logo. So do you do LeBron, Kobe? I mean, it's just uh, a crazy type thing, but I had to respect his game when he was on the court. What's up, Alan? Cheers, my friend. How are you doing this evening? Great uh, great post there. And, uh, I got to catch part of Pusa's stream. I don't know. I think they met, uh, sent me a thing when I came in there. Um, but I know you were asking some questions over there, too. But uh, they give a great breakdown on some of the stuff that was taking place. And Pusa always does a great job when they're their videos and stuff, and actually when I went over a thousand, it was because Pusa gave a push on one of their channels that got me over that thousand mark at the time, so, um, really good, uh, Kyrie had into irrelevancy, he hasn't done as much as people put on his shoulders, not like, you know, Kobe, now give it a, give it a, you know, a fair look, it's kind of like Kobe did take a little bit of time, and really, those earlier years, he had Shaq that kind of helped get him through some of that maze, yeah, you know, even Jordan took a little bit of time before he really broke out, but I just I don't see Kyrie to that next level to be kind of a Kobe type player. I think Kyrie would be a great player in his own right. I just don't know if I put him on the same thing with Kobe. Um, give Kobe the logo, and Jonathan doubted about um, Kyrie heading to relevancy. No, I think he'll be a relevant player in the league. Um, we'll just have to see how relevant he becomes over the years. John Taylor. What's he doing right now? Hey, what's happening, Dolly? Cheers. Dolly, what is going on with your channel? I saw you resubscribe back today. I don't know if you kind of took it down, uploaded it, and updated it again or what, but it was just funny. I was like, well, Dolly's been a subscriber for a while, so unless YouTube kind of scrubbed you out there some way, because um, YouTube does scrub people off of the list of, of uh, people that are subscribed to channels, which sucks because they have to resubscribe or people don't even know they're not subscribed. Uh, Kyrie had LeBron now said he flunked in Boston and he's doing what with the Nets and he's got some talent out there with the Nets too so yeah um, you know to be someone like you know a Kobe and I'll say like a LeBron and I'll say like a, a James you know you have to be that person that can take over a game and that's why I think Kyrie hasn't been able to do that yet and I say yet, you know, it may happen down the line where he can kind of do that, but he has not gotten to a point where he's able to take over a game in that kind of way where you pretty much put fear into the opposing players, you know. You look at, you go back to the old school, people like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and um, Julius Irvin, these kind of players that can just take over the game and just, you know, daggers and ice in the veins and just... Look at, you know, it's like I remember Jordan got fouled one game and he kind of just bit his lip and he said, okay, and he came back and, like, it was against Detroit, I think, and he just, like, dominated that whole game after that. Um, top 10 basketball player in the world right now. He could have been headed to relevancy. That's an absurd statement. Kyrie doesn't have the killer's mentality. And it's up to the sidekicks, all he says. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would, I would say with Allen, I do. Uh, I haven't seen the killer mentality from Kyrie to put teams away like you saw, like in the players I mentioned. Again, it's still early in his career when you're looking at what he may do. And but when Jordan came in the league, and Kobe came in the league, LeBron came in the league, they kind of came in with that kind of mentality for the most part. They may not have had all the people around them, but they had that mentality. And you know, Kyrie may develop that, or he may, you know. He maybe he hasn't enough thrown his way to actually be in that spotlight to, to perform that way yet. But we'll see what happens. Um, there were certain players, even like Reggie Miller, had that mentality that if he knew you were down or next to being down, he was going to put the nail in the coffin on you. 
Uh, Dolly says, what's up to the electric, eclectic beard? I ought to keep saying electric lately, the eclectic beard. I think even Pusa screwed up a couple of times saying electric, <laughs> and uh, she had to correct him, like, no, it's eclectic. <laughs> But big success to Alan. If you haven't checked out Alan, check out his channels. He's got the Eclectic Beard brand rolling. Has three different channels under it now between the gaming and the reactions and his main channel that he's on right now. So some great stuff there. Um, John the Celtics had a better record without him and without Durant. He's played in 17 games. Kyrie hit huge shots in the series with Golden State. And go rewatch the series when the Cavs won it all. And I don't think, I mean, I, I definitely don't doubt that he didn't uh, hit the shots there. Um, I think what Al might be saying, too, is kind of like, if you look at him as versus some of the other players that were mentioned, like, they called for the ball. They wanted the ball. They wanted to actually make the shots to actually put things in play. Um, they wanted that ball in that last few seconds. Now, maybe Kyrie did, but he was, because he was LeBron, he couldn't do that. But... I think that's where it stands out right now. And since he's left Cleveland, he hasn't really shown to be that guy as of yet, in my opinion. Now, he'll make big shots. Don't get me wrong. He can shoot the rock out of the gym. It's just whether or not he can dominate. Yeah, this is actually, well, this was one dolly that I had. I actually made a new updated hoodie that's on the uh, the website. But this was the first one I went through. And then kind of wanted to change something with the logo up here. But one of the hoodies that actually uh, is part of the merch out there now. Uh, the rest of LeBron carried, and they got L's. You guys got to watch more Kyrie. I'll definitely, I, well, now, because college football is over, I definitely probably watch more of the NBA stuff as well. Um, and, again, I don't I don't hate on Kyrie. I like Kyrie when he was back in college as well. Um, it's just that part of him has to still come out, I think, still. It's kind of like he may have it in him. It's just I don't know if it's been fully brought out as of yet, so... But again, we, we're looking at him like, you know, he's been in the league for a huge number of years. I think he's, you know, he's still in the league, still kind of in a younger amount of time. So we have time there to see what he does still. I mean, at one point they were, com they were comparing kind of like Dwayne Wade and Kobe. And Dwayne Wade was a, a, a killer type player too, but he was not to Kobe's game. See the Tony Kyrie, good handler. Nice shot, but he's not great. <laughs> and Allen, I will say, Allen does watch a lot of NBA as well. So, um, you, see, you see, he watches more of the NBA, like he's told us before, than college. So, he's an NBA fan. So, I'm sure he's definitely checked out Kyrie in the league and some of the stuff he's done. The time, time will definitely tell. Uh, my baby is in the video. The video you just made, do you have your your uh, your 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 doggy in that one? No, I like how you just have too much on the table. Good ball handler. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I see Kyrie, I see him more in, to, in the make of an Iversy, an Iverson type shadow. Um, I see him like that good handler that can make those shots. Iverson went the ball late and Iverson did different things to try to make action. But I kind of see Kyrie more kind of going in that mold than maybe Kobe's type mold. But Iverson was straight killer too, you know. He definitely went the right. He just, you know, I couldn't get that title, but... He was one of those fierce guards you did not want to go against. He has the best handle in the world. Come on, you, you definitely haven't watched Kyrie. Yeah. Kyrie's got, he's got a good crossover, too, yeah. But there's a ton of players in the league. I mean, he's definitely... I would say Kyrie is probably one of the top ten in the league now at this point from what I've seen. Um... <sighs> I mean, you got like Harden out there as well, and you got um, some of these other some other key players. But you got to, I would think you may have him in the top ten based on some of the roles. Uh, same with Dame. Wow, all four. Wow. 
Westy. Yeah, I mean, I got the beard. I had it, Kyrie. Um, I don't know about I don't know about Kemba. Um, above him, um, Kemba has stuff, but Kemba. And maybe I haven't watched him enough more in the last couple of years, but his consistency was always in question. I would say Kyrie's definitely more consistent on stuff. But, I mean, you know, someone that takes over the game, which never really gets a lot of love and respect and should, um, is, uh, what's your call? I used to be on San Antonio that um, is now on the Clippers. Um, he won a title with Toronto. Oh, shoot, who am I thinking of? Um, Oh, I can't think of his name right now. Let's see here. Leonard. That's what I was thinking of. Leonard. I was slipping my head. I must be getting that old age type memory or whatever. Um, but he's always been a, a player that kind of been under the radar for people. I mean, you look at Kyle, uh, Kawhi Leonard in the league and what he's done to teams and how he's taken over games, it's hard to say, like, Leonard is not the next one. Leonard, as Leonard is more kind of in that Kobe-type mode, in my mind, than any of the other players in the league just because of him being in that forward position, him getting a rock, being able to take you from court, from from one side of the court to the other, being able to post you up, being able to drive on you, be able to dunk on you, out rebound you. I think Kylie is more the next kind of to what Kobe was doing in the league. And the last couple of years, he's been the best player in the league, in my opinion. He just like crushes it. Um, Kyrie skills with handles have dipped since Cleveland. Uh, top five, no doubt, in the top ten point guard. Uh, John said plays like Jordan. Dolly's getting lost in the NBA conversation. She's just like, who cares? <laughs> um, she said chicken leg time earlier, too. Um, Beard plays, uh, let's see, Beard said plays like Jordan, smoke meth or crank. <laughs> Kyrie's a bona fide kid. Yeah, Ky Kyrie is. Kyrie is definitely a killer, and he's one that can take over a game and those type of situations. He wanted to rock. I mean, it kind of sucked for Pop when he actually left um, to go to Toronto. Uh, but he went to Toronto, and he took a team that could not get over the hump, and he got him a title in Toronto. Um, now he's out there with the uh, what he's doing in the league now, and they're still out there doing a great job. He's still dominating in the games that he's actually being a part of. Um, you know, he had teams he can go to, and he actually went to – the Clippers. You think the big team in L.A., the Lakers won them. He went to the Clippers, and I haven't seen if they played recently since the last time, but I know they played them twice this year, and the Clippers are 2-0 and versus the Lakers, who were supposed to dominate LeBron and Davis and all of that. So, Kyrie, Kyrie is, I can't talk, Kawhi is definitely a beast. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, there's no drug type thing, so... Just friendly debate, friendly debate. <laughs> but yeah, um, one on one, I don't know if there's a better player that can right now take someone to the hole than Kylie. Than Kawhi. Why can I keep saying Kylie? Uh, let me see here. Most like Jordan that we have in the game now. Yeah, I mean, and remember Kobe was compared to being the next Jordan as well. So you have a player. That can kind of fit that mold of playing in a Jordan type role, playing in a Kobe type role. He's just that versatile. So, Dolly, I am drinking the Wisconsin Stout. The Wisconsin Stout. And here you go, Dolly. Here's a picture of it so that you can see it there. And it is a stout with maple and lactose. Almost like breakfast in a can. Definitely a nice one to kick back and enjoy. Um, had this for a bit of time, finally enjoying it, and, uh, I wish I had pancakes and bacon right now, because the maple is coming through nicely. What's going on, Leprechaun? It's been a while. Cheers, my friend. 
Happy New Year to you, by the way. Oh, shit, you do it's in the house. Definitely been a while, and Happy New Year to you. I don't think I've talked to you in the New Year's, um, unless we talked maybe in the first week or so, but it's definitely been a while since I've had you pop up on here. Hopefully things are good, my friend, as well. I had done a little bit of a beer chat earlier on, kind of in the first 10 minutes or so, and now we're kind of chatting. We were just going through some different basketball-type stuff more recently. Um, so we were talking about some of the players kind of that next Kobe type role or kind of fit that type role. And so that's where we were at. I'm interested to see you when Duncan winds up. He's fun to watch. And yuck, I stay with my strawberry quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you stay in your lane, Dolly. You stay in your lane. Cheers to you as well, Leprechaun. Or excuse me, Luca Donacic. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen much with him. Um, I'm just now starting to get more into looking at that stuff for the NBA and see what's going to happen and, at this point, um, you know, it's kind of weird. I go through the college football season, then I flow into college basketball. In between, I'll watch some games here and then on the NBA, but I'll definitely get more into it now with uh, college football definitely gone. Root for Donnick more if he was an American. <laughs> Why can't you root for him not being an American, Donnick? He's a good player. You like him. I mean, I remember back in the day when people liked Detlef Shrimp. You know, he was an American, and he could do some different things out there as well. Or no whiskey. If the player is good and he can do work, I then you know I'll definitely root for him. Yao Ming, another one. <sighs> American and not basketball is a global game, and he's very talented. Yeah, that's one of the other things that I didn't realize until hearing some of the accounts. But as we know, like the NBA has actually grown in China, but they were saying how Kobe was one of the first people in with the whole China thing. And what he had launched over there. Um, his jersey was a top selling jersey in China for five years. And it was because of some of the stuff he had done. It got the NBA to even grow more in China. So kudos to him in that regard. That helped to make it more global. Could go for some waffles. Home, homemade beaches. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And maybe some. Is that coffee? I think you drank coffee. Uh, let's see. I can't wait for college football already. Go bug eyes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Season just ended. Like, when is it back? Did they have the uh, the Senior Bowl yet? I don't remember seeing anything if they had the Senior Bowl or the uh, East West game or any of the uh, Senior games that take place. Um, I thought it would have been this past weekend, but I saw no coverage about it. I mean, they're kind of not much to see because they're kind of limited. I think on some of the things they can do there. I mean. I know they had the, the Pro Bowl, which I don't know anybody that watched the Pro Bowl anymore, but they have that on Sunday. Um, might have to talk NBA instead of college. I'm always down for the NBA, Alan, so we can definitely do that. And, uh, yeah, tomorrow night and on the Eclectic Beard, 9 p.m. If you guys aren't familiar, go to Eclectic Beard and there in the comments hit the three dots next to his name and you can go to his channel and subscribe. Tuesday nights at 9, we talk sports. Among other things, it starts out with sports. Where it goes from there, we never have an idea. But um, we'll be talking some different things there as well uh, tomorrow night. And then on Tuesdays is when we usually do that. Everyone is dying in China. Benedito. Well, in Wuhan, that's where it's kind of coming out of. But now they've quarantined a lot of China. As far as how they have everything being monitored, they've been monitoring screenings in all kinds of countries for people coming in. So, um, interesting to say. Uh, like American players, personal preference. Everybody's got you know right to prefer. Um, I like the talent, like Alan said as well. I mean, if, if a player's got skills, like like I like watching Serge Ibaka. He's a great player. You know, uh, hot chocolate or a burger. <laughs> Eclectic may know that college football question. Um, let me see here. I can't, can't wait for college football already. Go Buckeyes. What was the college football question? I might have, Did I miss it, Leprechaun? Was there a question I missed? I know Alan was ready for his tie to roll again for next year, so. The more I watch WVU and basketball, though, I'm pretty hyped up for the tournament upcoming. I mean... You never want to get ahead of it, but we got a hell of a squad this year with our big men down low. If they stay healthy, it could be a hell of a battle. 
Yep, yep. Might just be me and you, homie. <laughs> well, that's all right. We'll we'll bring the people out. <laughs> I ain't scared. <laughs> Bernie Mac, I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, he goes to the local public school. That where y'all talk college, and I'll nod and say, "That's right, ha ha." <laughs> I'm in high school. <laughs> Dolly said, "So yeah." <laughs> they have a college student in Philly who has it. Oh, in high school, um, I haven't heard about anybody in Philly. I know they had different areas where they thought like there was a guy in Washington who was the first one in America with it, and then they had some people in Virginia. I think they were flagging it real okay, but I didn't hear about that in. Uh, in uh, Philadelphia. The Senior Bowl, you mentioned, I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, and I knew it was upcoming at some point, but I didn't see anything. I know that Joe Burrow opted out of the Senior Bowl. Go figure. I mean, there's no need for him to play in the Senior Bowl. Um, let's see when this actually being played here. Oh, I guess I missed it. It was two days ago. Justin Air Air was named the uh, MVP at the Senior Bowl. Oh, won't be seeing it this year, then. You'd have think it was January 25th, so Saturday. But you'd think you would have seen more about that upcoming. Which I was saying here, because I'm actually in the Cincinnati area. If I was the Bengals, because they're not going to do anything, probably except wreck Bur Burrow's career, trade out of that number one spot for the Dolphins one and pick up their three number ones um, or some other draft picks as well, because you're going to be in a rebuilding phase anyway, and get like Justin Herber, Herber at like uh, that five spot or so if you want a quarterback like that. Really, it's a, you just don't know who may do what when you draft that high in a draft for... Um, a quarterback in the league anyway. I mean, go back to Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf, and more people were saying Ryan Leaf over Peyton Manning. That didn't work out well. Uh, <laughs> and you've had a number of busts over the years that guys that didn't pan out. So I think Burrow's got a great feel. I can see him being well, doing well in the uh, NFL. But you just never know when you get into a program, what they do to you. NFL, they can, they can kill a career rather easily. We've seen a lot of teams do it. Uh, he was quarantined, but maybe too late. Well, they had a report out of China saying they were they, that the virus could actually be contagious before the symptoms are actually noticed. We have yet to confirm it on our end, so I don't know if that's a spin China may have on it, or if that's the case and we just haven't researched it yet enough. But if it can actually be contagious before you even notice the symptoms, there's no telling where that can actually go. And I can tell you today... Um, at work, that really set the market down. If you didn't see it, the Dow was like down over 400 points today. Um, a lot of tech people were being hit on stuff. So it'll be kind of interesting. Some of the sell-offs that were taking place. A lot of times it's a fear or concern, but people are definitely uh, starting to notice that one. So you got that one from the Wuhan that is uh, definitely wreaking a little bit of havoc. Uh, senior Bowl. Intrigue. I want to see how Jordan Love play. Yeah, I mean, I have to go back and watch the video now, John, since we missed it. Yeah, it was Saturday. <laughs> the Baca, ABC, Ginobili, Parker. I like how Charles Barkley says Ginobili. Uh, Dag Nabbit. Yeah, he was a sports fan. I saw nothing. Yeah, I didn't see anything on it. Um, now, they usually have the Senior Bowl. They usually have like an East West game. They have a North South as well. So maybe those games are Saturday this upcoming week, but. I haven't seen anything out there. Let me see if there's any other college football games on the schedule, actually. Because those are not usually done the same weekend. Let's see if I see anything popping up here. No, it's like it's a regular schedule from during the course of the year. Uh -huh. <laughs> I 
Well, I guess the Senior Bowl was the North South they're saying. Um, I didn't know that was the case. I thought it was a separate game. They used to have the East West Shrine game as well. But they said of the Senior Bowl, um, Justin Herbert, 9 of 12 for 83 yards and a touchdown. The North won 34 to 17. But Herbert was on the South at quarterback and got MVP or whatever. Even though they lost, I guess. Uh, Patterson, 6 of 10, 131 in TD. They had uh, Duvernay. Duvernay only had two catches for 28 yards in that game. Yeah, it doesn't look too exciting for any of the stats here. Uh, Jalen Hurts threw a touchdown pass to Jennings. Old Alabama going to Oklahoma player. But 34-17 was the final score. So we ended up missing that one. Uh, let me see. Dolly said you guys are boring. If Dolly doesn't feel included, then she lashes out. That's for sure. Um, do, 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 do. Browns should trade up for Chase Young. Wouldn't wouldn't hurt him to do that for sure. I would just say the Bengals don't want to trade. I almost felt like before taking Chase Young was a better opportunity for them because I figured they can get another quarterback, whether it's in a draft or in free agency, that might be decent. Um, but Mike Brown does not like to pay money for anything. So then when the Dolphins have high interest in Joe Bur Burrow, they could take him. Give up their picks, and then you can come back with the Abert probably because two will probably go number four. They're saying. Uh, I grab two over Burrow if his medical comes back okay. I'm heading to bed. Home, you got to get up for some get grind. All right, Alan. Well, thanks for hanging in for a bit. What's up, Blake? Cheers, my friend. What's going on? Uh, lies, all lies. We are all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> she said do, but I think she meant die. <laughs> because that was a do what, Dolly. Uh, start smacking yourselves. Blake says, cheers, everyone. Uh, heard older people get it quicker. I don't know. Usually when he's have type of disease, it's older people and kids usually get it. Uh, so everyone go home and hug something. Uh, Dolly, the juice is loose. Uh, hey, what's happening, Tweety? H happy Monday to you. Uh, the Outsider, I saw the playback of your video from yesterday, Dope Show. Oh, my God. Woo, can we talk a second about The Outsider? The Outsider, if you haven't seen it, is off the hook on HBO, um, based off a of Stephen King, uh, novel, I think, or short story or whatever. I watched episode four earlier tonight because I didn't watch it last night, so now I'm all caught up. Dude, from, from the beginning to where I'm at now, it's just riveting. The way they're kind of building up and all the things that are going through with it. I'm starting to figure out what I think is happening in it. Um, but yeah, it, it grabs you. It's a great show that HBO put out for that one. So I'm looking forward to the next episode. Those are the shows I wish were like on Netflix I could binge. Because I, I hate waiting another week to see the other one. I like to be able to watch them back to back. But I'm glad you liked it, John. Yeah, I'm going to stay on top of that one for sure. Um, might need Blake's teddy bear <laughs> to hug. <laughs> Um, is the hood, that hoodie now merchandise? Cheers, everyone. Yeah, I've got a hoodie like this one out there. I changed the logo on this part, but it's out on the uh, the merchandise site and everything right now. Which if anybody is looking to the uh, down in the description, there's a link to the Beer Venture store and stuff. But there's other stuff out there. Like a couple people have gotten like the t-shirts and there's like glassware and stuff like that that I'm starting to put onto it. So, but yeah, you can actually get a hoodie out there as well. And some other things that I'll be looking to add. I put a polo out there too. So, uh, for those casual Fridays at work. <laughs> um, what is The Outsiders about? Is it like Pony Boy, the gang movie? No. It's not Outsiders. It's The Outsider. It's not like the old um, <laughs> movie with Matt Dillon and all of them. So, it's based off a of Stephen King story. And basically... There's murders that take place. They're trying to figure out what's going on. They think it's somebody that's doing it, but then they're finding out that it might not be that person because the people are in two different spots at the same time. So it becomes like kind of a whodunit type thing, but it's done in a horror type setting as far as some of the suspense and everything. 
Um, and it starts to all build up along those lines. But it's not like horror, horror, like where it really tries to jump out and scare you as much. It's more it's suspenseful. Um, but the way they do some of the music, it does kind of freak you out sometimes, especially if you're sitting there in the dark. Um, yes, Beanie, a uh, great actor. Honestly, he does well in everything he's in. And that was Men Mental Soul. Who's, who's Mental Soul? Uh, the Jocks and the Greaser, Scott. <laughs> So you like murders, Rod? <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, Dolly. You got to keep up here. <laughs> this isn't like a um, documentary on like the Zodiac Killer or something. <laughs> I like suspense. I like horror. I like all kinds of movies. I like comedies, action, adventure, drama. But... Anything that's kind of made out of a Stephen King book, I'm always willing to always give more than half a chance because he's a great writer and if the movies are done right, they translate over really well. Uh, John knows everything, doesn't he? <laughs> As Dolly said. John's pretty smart. John's in tune with a lot of things for sure. <laughs> uh, ben Modison is... Oh, he's the detective. Okay, cool. I didn't know what, I didn't know what his actual name was. Um... I've seen him in other things before, and he is a, he is a pretty good actor. Um, I was surprised by how good Jason Bateman was on it, um, considering you usually think of him being more in the comedy-type feel, uh, but he really nailed the role that he's had in it so far. Um, and the, the other people that are acting have all done a great job, so not wise at all. <laughs> but yeah, that has become... An early favorite of me so far this season to watch as a show. And I think they only got like a couple episodes left on that one. So it'll be interesting to see how they do that going out the rest of this year. Um, if they're going to be bringing it back later on in the year. Or if it's like going to be like one of those miniseries type things. I didn't check to see if it was going to be a series or a miniseries. Coming off of Watchmen from last season, I needed something like this. So this is excellent. Um, I will be watching... The Walking Dead again, that'll pop up here. Um, I think that's like in February, like mid February. But then Westworld is back in March, which I'm I'm hooked into. Way, I'm hooked into Westworld too, so I can't wait for Westworld to come back with the next part of that show. Yeah, I mean, if you like suspenseful type things, and if you like Stephen King, Dolly is definitely a nice, a good show to watch. I'm, it's got some uh, interesting stuff to it. Definitely holds the attention span for sure. Ugh. If you have some time, give it a watch. That's it. Exactly. Do Raj, you give it a three beer mug rating? <laughs> Well, if it's out of four or five mugs, that would depend. But if it's out of five mugs, I would actually give it a five mug rating. It's definitely uh, definitely one to definitely watch. If that's your kind of thing, you will not be disappointed. Ozark is another one I need to watch because I haven't watched it. Um, and I do want to watch it. I do have Netflix. And I don't know why I never ended up watching that one. I just never got around to it. I've had friends tell me how good of, it, of a show it was. So I do want to check that out at some point, but I, I still got to finish Black Mirror. I only started Black Mirror just earlier last year because I was watching other shows that were on Netflix or HBO or other stuff too. So between working, between doing YouTube, between doing family stuff, and then trying to find time to catch a show, it's definitely hard. But some shows we'll watch together that we get hooked into, but... Most of the time, if we're watching other stuff, it's kind of hard for us to do that. Yeah, I wish they would bring back another True Detective as well. The last season was really good. Second was, eh, first one was really good. So hopefully they'll bring back another True Detective series with a couple other good actors on that at some point. People were talking about the Grammys yesterday. I didn't watch any. I'm... I haven't watched an award show. I don't even know, know when the last time was. They just don't do anything for me anymore. And now you find out stuff that I kind of thought before that you felt like some of the stuff was kind of rigged and things. So I guess some people still like to watch the award shows, though. But 
that's just like something I just don't care about as much. Speaking of award shows, we are thinking of maybe still trying to do like a beer award show if we can get Joe in here next couple of weeks or so. Um, we were talking about that the other day, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Watch the Ozark, okay, Bateman is kind of corny. They need a more villainous dude. Hmm. Oh, the new Fargo is about to come out as well on FX. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Um, that one's got Chris Rock in that one. It's going to be interesting too. So if you haven't seen a trailer for the new Fargo, that looks to be pretty good this season. Award show. Give me an award. Most beautiful. Oh, most about themselves. Dolly and Beanie. Winner. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> but yeah. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped up. And thanks for everyone that jumped in always great to chat with everybody on here always a good time i was only expecting to go on for a few minutes i don't even know how long i've been on here now but anybody that wanted to see if you came in late you went to see the beer review as i'm doing with these videos usually within the first 10 minutes or so do the beer review depending and then go into other topics as we actually have a nice chat um so you can go back and you can actually see that part of it but great spending some time with everybody here Nice, relaxing type feel. Hopefully, your Monday started out pretty good with work, um, that everything is up and rolling, and you'll have a nice, smooth Tuesday tomorrow. So, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks for swinging by. As always, keep drinking those good craft beers. If you haven't seen anything um, on the website or things like that that you want to check out, make sure you check the description below. There's a link to the website. Um, there's a link to the uh, Beer Venture stuff as well that people were asking about. There's hats, there's t-shirts, all kinds of stuff out there. Um, I'm going to be trying to do some, I'm going to try to get, to get some stickers or something at some point too. Um, but a lot of good resources down there as well. And then tomorrow, I think I'm going to try to do, tomorrow it won't be at 9 o'clock. I may do a live stream at 8 o'clock tomorrow Eastern um, on what beer I may drink that day. And then, but outside of Tuesday, because I'm on Alan's show in the Eclectic Beard at 9, the other nights are usually 9 or the Beer Flow show at 9.15. I'm trying to get like a schedule down. Again, where I'll introduce a different beer or something along those lines. If I don't do a beer, I'm going to actually look to do something around beer. So I think the next video I want to put together is talking about what is a Lambic, um, as we were talking about the different beer styles. There's some people that like that video. Maybe do a video on what a Lambic Ale is and then get into some other beer type styles or get into some of the hop type stuff. So my goal right now is to try to get something where around 9 o'clock, except for Tuesdays, it'll be at 8. I haven't put the schedule out there yet on the channel, any about sex or anything like that. But to try to do more of a routine daily to try to get some stuff uploaded. So we'll see how it goes there. But be on the lookout for that for tomorrow. And I look forward to catching up with you guys then. And... I will see you at that time. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the Eclectic Beard and you want to check out the sports show for the guys in here, Leprechaun, John, if you guys haven't seen us over there, we'll be talking sports. Blake, he's on that panel tomorrow. Uh, Blake TV, if you haven't checked him out, check him out because I believe tomorrow, if I'm right, Blake, you'll have the B&A show. I think is on Tuesdays at 1 Eastern. So him and Alan will be doing something on his channel. Great fun time. I'm usually at work so I don't get a chance to chime in as much. But um, check out uh, Blake for that as well as everybody else in here. And uh, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Cheers and peace, everybody. Talk to you then.